however, when I've been asked about a pin it button solution for WordPress bloggers, in this video I'm going to show you the one that I use and how I configure it. So first we're going to go to your plugins and then add new. So plugins are on your dashboard and there's add new down here. Okay, and in search keywords you want to look up jQuery <clears throat> pin it. And this is the one you're looking for. So click install. And then activate. Okay. And then this, this very helpfully tells you where to find it. Did you ever put a plugin in and then wonder where the heck is it? So it's under settings, jQuery pin it button. And it doesn't have a lot of settings, but it's really really simple to use and what I like about it is that you could either choose a disabled class so that means you would put this information in the image CSS so that it doesn't have a pin it button or in my case I only wanted to show on classes that I or image CSS classes that I designate as pin it p-i-n-i-t and I'm going to show you where to to drop that in now this is a really smart plugin. Okay. Before I save this, I'm going to show you immediately what it's done. So a couple of things before I go into this, a couple of things is one, it has the pin it button on the home page or on that main image, but not on these. I don't want it there because this is the home page with excerpts on it. I don't want it to show up because if somebody pins it from this page, it's going to go to the home page of the site and not to this article. I only want them to pin it from within. So I'm going to show you how to turn that off. But it is smart enough not to choose the pin it. It knows that the images on the sidebar are not pinnable. So that's really nice. And that's what this is. If you remove that and just leave that IMG, it will make every single image pinnable. Okay, and I don't think you really want that. So a couple of things, I'm going to enable the pin it class. So once I do that, because this does not have that class assigned to it, it will automatically, uh, well, no. Anything that does not have the pin it will be disabled. So I want front and home page to have the pin it button disabled on, okay? So let's make sure that that works. I found that this works sporadically. So now you see this is the home page. It will not work on any of the excerpts, which I think it only worked on this main one. But the good news is, is that it doesn't show up anymore. Again, when you have a pin and you pin it to Pinterest, you want it to click back to the article or the, that it is pinned from. You do not want it going to the home page. So those are two things. One, enable the pin it class and remove it from the home page. Now, you might say, well, I want every single image in my article to be pinnable. Do you really? Let's look at that. So paper flower gift boxes, not only is that pinnable here. Now, I guess I did save it, didn't I? I want to take the pin it out. If I take this out, that means I'm going to refresh my screen here. This becomes pinnable, but so does my signature. Now this signature goes to the online shopping and I want it to go there, but if I'm not careful, I could end up pinning this instead of having this go to my store. And I'd say the worst case scenario is, say you use Linkly or some other type of link building image based code in your site, you've got this Pinterest button that's going to get in the way of you being able to get that sale. See what I mean? Now, it's not impossible. You have to be really careful to click the corner and then it goes to the store, but you don't really want it showing up here. So that's why I have the pin it here. And if it does not have that class enabled, I do not want it to be pinnable. So again, removed it on the home page and save those changes again. So now here it's not showing up anywhere because it's 
not pin it. Okay, so the next thing you might want to change or, or look at anyway is visual. Do you want to show the button on hover or do you want it always on or always on touch devices? So the other thing is a description source. Now I've always had it be the alt image alt. Oh my gosh, what did I do? Let me refresh that. I pulled it and it disappeared. Here we go. Image alt attribute. So I, this is the order in which it will pull. If there's no alt information, it comes from the title of the image or the post title, worst case scenario. So from what I've been reading, you really should not have it be the image alt attribute because if you want it to say something or have a call to action, the image alt is really only used as an extra piece of information that's not visible, whose primary purpose is to describe the photo vis to visually impaired users and also provides context to search engines as to how your photos should be indexed. So you're not supposed to use that. I am going to use it, leave it checked just in case I mess up. So basically I want not the post description, I'm sorry, image description. Let's move that up. Now the image description, that's going to make it a little tougher and I'm going to show you why. But that comes up first. If I don't have a description, it's going to take the alt attribute. Okay, so I'm going to, well, let me look at the rest of them. I'm going to leave the transparency to that. Um, the pin it image, you have the old default information. I'm sorry, old default, or you have some modern looking pin it buttons. And then you can choose normal. I like small. And, you know, whether you want it rounded or squared or rectangle or, you know, rounded rectangle. I actually like a little square or a little circle. And top left corner. This is all fine and good. I'm just going to leave that here. There is a pro version if you want to. And then there's more advanced settings. But I would say you're going to concern yourself now with understanding how to designate an image as pinnable. So we're going to go to a post and we're going to find that paper flower gift boxes. Okay. Edit. So paper flower gift boxes. We're going to edit this image and we're now going to put, well, let's look at here first. I'm just going to show you that no image on this page is clickable. So when I go to advanced options, sometimes it's closed. You'd open up advanced options and put the word pin it in there. Okay. And then update it and then update this. And then update this. Refresh that screen. So now you have a pin it button when you hover, but there's no pin it button on the signature. So you should be good. So when you go to pin it, it's pulling the title, Paper Flower Gift Boxes. That is the name of the post. Because remember, I had to choose if there's no image alt, which there always should be. This is just a test, whatever. Um, your alternative text your description will be pulled first. Again, you saw the order in which alternative text, if I didn't give a description, which in this case I didn't, but I didn't give an alternative text either. And there's no title, see, image title attribute. There's nothing in the title. So it pulled the image, I'm sorry, the article name. So first of all, I wanna fix that alternative text you want the alternative text. Again, there is a very real reason. It's simply an extra piece of information that's not seen. It's added to your photos. The only time you might see it is if your photo doesn't load, whether there's a load error or whatever reason your site, if you've seen it, you've been to a site, it's not loading properly. Images don't load, but you'll see a little snippet of something. It'll say like something.jpg and 
you know, that's worst case scenario where there's no alt information. It'll literally be the name of the file. So you want that to be as descriptive as possible. Why? Because it improves accessibility. Accessibility meaning the visually impaired people will still have a good user experience because they are unable to see the photos, but they'll know what it should be. The alt text is used for, um, to provide context for search engine um, to um, index your photo. Um, and it should describe what your photo is. And I've heard where people load this up with hashtags and stuff for pin Pinterest. It really should not be in the alternative text. It should be in the description. The caption, on the other hand, so your alternative text I'm going to put in here and it's going to be paper, flower, gift, box, ideas. Um, the alternative text, just for your information, should include the keywords. So the name of the post, the keywords for this post are perhaps paper flower gift box ideas, um, paper flower gift boxes. So you want to ideally have some keywords in there. And so let's update it. We'll say you wanted this image to have more information. Say if you wanted it to be on Pinterest and you want it to have a call to action. Well, you're going to have to add in a description. And you can't add the description in from here. You had to add the description in at the time that you uploaded it. So we're going to remove it. Okay. And update here. You're going to remove it and add it back in. And the only way to do that is to go back to the media library to find that image. And now you can add the alt text here because we added it there, but I deleted it. <laughs> so the alt text is paper, flower, gift boxes. And the title, it doesn't matter, paper, flower, gift boxes. The more important thing actually is the alt text. The caption is what people see. So under it, it could say, you know, beautiful paper, flower, gift box. It doesn't matter what you put under it, but the caption is what shows in the blog post under the image. The description is what I chose I wanted Pinterest to grab first. And so I'm going to say, and, and the thing with Pinterest, it's only going to show you like the first six or seven words. So make that description something um, that you want Pinterest to see. So we have free paper flower tutorial on my blog. Okay. And so I'm going to insert it into post. I'm going to update it. Oh, I'm going to do one more thing. Now I dropped it in again. Now I can get to the image class. I want to make sure it says pin it. Whoops, pin it. And you can't see the description. Okay. So update, update now. Now I'm going to see if this is the proper description. Okay, let's hit pin it. It opens in a new window. Let's see if it pulls free paper flower tutorial on my blog. So that's great. So you can save it to your board or people can save it to their boards. And then the nice thing is they can click that image and it will bring them back. It will bring them back to that article. Plus you've got your information here. They're, they're automatically adding a lead in or a call to action on that pin. Okay. The other thing is if you wanted to, um, Pinterest has the ability to read hashtags. So in that description, you would add the hashtags. And again, you would have to, if you wanted to add it something to the description, you literally have to take it out again and drop it back in again. You cannot, um, you can't go back to the media library um, and add it in. You, you actually have to drop it in here and add that. So if you have the forethought, when you are uploading it for the first time, if you add that image description and links and everything, it should hold over, but it doesn't always. So it has to be in there before you drop it in. So 
Again, if you wanted hashtags, it's all a matter of planning out this post in advance, adding the paper flower hashtags or whatever hashtags you think are going to help you. So there's one more thing I want to say about using the description field. You're going to want to have a plugin like Yoast SEO because it will disable something called an attachment page. Every image that's uploaded has an attachment page. It has an information page, right? That Google will see, and this will show up with the alternative text and the caption and the description if you've added all that, and it will or could be seen as duplicate content, which is not good. So the cheap way to do it or the free way is to have something called Yoast SEO and out of the box, turning on Yoast SEO disables this page, these attachment pages from being indexed. So that if you have one that is, has a lot of information in it, such as the one we just did here in the description, so that this does not show up as duplicate content, it will turn that off. A more expensive way to do that is again, this tasty pins, um, it will actually add, an, um, and I'm not necessarily recommending it, it adds a Pinterest text information right there in image detail, so you don't have to drop it in again. You can edit it right from inside without playing games. It's $30 a year. It has a lot of other optimization options on it. I, you know, I'm not saying that you should do it. If you're not making a lot of money from your blog right now, you might want to just do it the cheap way, like what I've just shown you, but that is also an option for you. But until then, take care. Let me know if you have any questions. See you on the flip side.